Good morning and welcome to Cedar Crest. We're so excited that you've joined us for service this morning. Hey, if we haven't met yet, my name is Austin Prince. I serve as a student pastor here at Cedar Crest and it is a great day to worship our Lord. So whether you're watching at home, you're on the road, you're with friends, whatever you're doing, we're just glad that you've joined us for service today. I want you to know if you're new or newer, you could head over to ccbchurch.org slash connect. There's a connect card we'd love for you to fill out just saying like, hey, I'm new or hey, I'm joining you. I want to let you know that just allows us to follow up with you and just celebrate the fact that you're here this morning. So if that's you, make sure you go fill it out. We're actually going to hear from Pastor Greg this morning. So we're getting ready for, for worship, hearing from Pastor Greg. Uh, he's starting a brand new sermon series called Authentic Living in an Artificial World. That sounds really cool to me. And we're going to learn a lot of amazing things in scripture. So make sure you stick around. And what's cool is we're going to get started right now. And I'll see you guys after the service. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth? Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless and all in wonder? The King of glory. Above all kings, let me hear you, church. This is amazing grace. This is a failing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You laid down your life that I would be saved. I see for all that you've done for me, yeah. Who brings our chaos? Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The king of glory, the king above. With truth and justice, who rules for nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of Glory, He's the King above all kings. Yeah, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you. worthy and worthy is the lamb who was slain every voice and every heart and worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain who worthy is the king who conquered the grave singing worthy is the lamb who was slain church that I would be set free Whoa. Jesus I sing for all that you've done for all me. that you've done for me Sing 
believe about resurrection power. I believe in the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. I believe in the power of the gospel still makes the broken whole. I believe that the curse of sin was broken when they rolled away that stone. I believe, I believe, I believe. And as I bow start falling when we fall down on our knees i believe that the lame will go walking and the blind are gonna see i believe that the gates of hell tremble when the church begins to sing Don't you look at what the Lord has done. Sing it to the darkness. Then the light has come. Sing it to the nations. Look at what the Lord has done. Sing it to the daughters. Oh, sing it to the sons. To every generation. this morning. Let's declare his love. Amazing love that welcomes me the kindness of mercy that brought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving we say
Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you this morning. You guys are looking awful sharp this morning. Well, most of you. There's a few I'm a little suspect of. It's good to see you this morning. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you joining us on this uh, Easter Sunday here at Cedar Crest. I want to welcome all of our folks who are joining us online as well. Thank you for being here as well with us and taking the time to join us today. We'll just ask if you could take just a minute if you're on the website or might run over there to the website and ccbchurch.org. Uh, forward slash connect and just let us know that you're here particularly if you're a first time uh, if you've joined us for the first time today we'd really appreciate getting to know who you are and have a chance to connect with you as well for you folks that are that are here so no we have a lot of guests today a lot of family members that are are here and so we appreciate you taking the time to be here as well if you live here in town kind of don't have a church that you're connected with and we would love to have a, a chance to talk with you about that as well it's kind of hard to get around to everybody on a service like t today but uh, but hopefully you've been greeted here this morning since uh, since you've been here and if you are kind of from here, uh, looking for a church home, maybe a family to get connected with, I just invite you to come back to the pastor's table right back there in the back, uh, right after the service. We'll give you a little gift for being here today and uh, visit with you just a little bit um, about, the, about Cedar Crest and give you some, some information about us. Um, just a couple of things uh, to remind you of today and to talk about in your chairs. There's a little card uh, like this that uh, is going to be right there beside you. Just kind of call your attention to that. A um, couple of things that are that are on there. There's uh, on the front of it. There's just a couple of reminders about what's going to take place uh, beginning next Sunday. So Greg will start a new sermon series, and that's uh, out of the book of James. It's called uh, Authentic Living in an Artificial World. A very timely topic for us to, today. So we're going to talk a lot about authenticity, kind of probably for the next quarter, um, probably the next three months or so, we'll be talking about that. So just want to call your attention to that. Also, what he'll be talking about, uh, questions Jesus asked on Wednesday. And then on the back, there's a little bit of, there's a calendar, kind of some main events that are coming up over the next few months. Just call your attention to those. If those apply to you, we would uh, just want you to put those on your calendar so uh, you'll be aware that those are coming up. So over the last month or so, we've been talking about the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. You know, this is one of the three main offerings that we take up as Southern Baptists through the year. Uh, this one is for what we call home missions. This is North America, United States, and Canada. And so if you've come prepared to bring that offering this morning, uh, we will receive that in just a little bit. Hang on to that. That's what the baskets up here on the, in the front are for. And so our ushers, as soon as I read scriptures and pray, they'll come down. But that's just to receive our regular offering offering if you've come prepared to do the Annie Armstrong offering then you just hang on to that we'll do that in just uh, just a little bit for those folks who are joining us online if you would like to participate in that we'd love for you to do that as well you can go back to the same website ccbchurch.org forward slash give and there'll be a place for you to there's a little drop down box you can go down to that to Annie Armstrong offering and you can participate in that as well we'd uh, appreciate you doing that okay now you're gonna have to stand back up for just a minute Scripture reading for today, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if you'd stand with me for the reading of God's Word. Ushers will receive our uh, offering as soon as I read Scripture and pray, and then the choir's going to sing for us uh, after that, and then we will receive that, uh, that offering. So you guys, 1 Corinthians 15? Yes? No? Maybe? It's in the New Testament. Keith, you ready? Don't want to start without you. It's kicking? All right. First, First Corinthians 15, beginning in verse 1. This is what the Word of God says. Now I remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Would you pray with me, please? 
Father, we are grateful for all that this day means to us as a family of faith. That on this day, we observe that most holy and sacred day in which you arose from that tomb and set us back to a path of life. By the scripture says that your resurrection was the first fruits of our own resurrection. We have hope in our own resurrection because of your resurrection that happened first. Thank you that you give us the promise that we can have abundant life right now and eternal life in the future. Bless our choir as they lead us now. Thank you for those who are investing in the ministry of Cedar Crest during our offering time. And Father, we especially pray for the preaching of your word. Would you challenge hearts this morning? Draw us closer to you. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You can have a seat. That paid my way, death its price. When he flowed down from the cross, my sins were gone, my sins forgot. There is a grave that dwells. His precious blood that gave me life in three
can wash away our sin nothing. that's right or now I would say nothing nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus amen yeah. well, it's good to see you this morning I had a chance to to uh, greet most everybody and uh, most of you look pretty good the guys can use a little work but that's okay so <laughs> let our kids have a chance to go across the hallway good to see them I, I, I don't see any Easter bonnets where are the Easter bonnets ladies Huh? I guess we're not having any. All right. So we've been uh, receiving our our offering all uh, month long for our Annie Armstrong uh, home mission offering. That's uh, North America missions. That's Canada, United States, 
And uh, so some of you wait till this day, this moment, to bring your offering and put it in the basket. Some have already given, and we appreciate what you have given. And some of you are thinking, boy, I wish I'd have brought my checkbook. Does anybody have a checkbook anymore? Yeah, yeah. four of you? Yeah. Four of you have checkbooks? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so, so we're going to receive it. If you're our guest, just kind of hang in with us for just a moment, and we're going to stand, and then we're going to receive this offering. We're going to pray God to bless our offering, and then we'll, we'll get on with the sermon this morning. So let's stand. If you would stand with me. If you came with your offering, would you bring it down here, please? And, and uh, just place it in the basket as a fragrant aroma. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, let's start again because I don't think you're with me. So, Dear Jesus, thank you for this offering. May every missionary who receives this money use it to reach people for Christ. For your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So on Tuesday of this week, I uh, had the opportunity to uh, share a, a gospel message with, uh, it was the Protestant chapel service at St. Francis. Uh, uh, Charles is one of the chaplains, he's one of the Protestant chaplains there. And he asked me if I would come, and, and then he said something pretty funny. He said, you only have 10 minutes. I said, well, I can hardly clear my throat in 10 minutes, so... So we get there, and uh, uh, it was a nice service. There was, a, you know, years ago, uh, Protestants weren't allowed in that chapel. About 15 years ago, you couldn't even go in there unless you were Catholic. And I understand. I respect that. And uh, so, so we were there, and uh, the service went along, and, and we had a, 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 an opening song we sang, and, and then uh, we had a scripture read, and, and then Charles sang a special number for us. And when I got up, it was just 10 minutes into the service. I said, does that mean I have 20 now? And uh, he said, do what you want. So I did. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was a great time. I enjoyed that. I told them, Keith, about uh, the, uh, the story about uh, generosity, if we can get the, the, uh, the title up there this morning. So um, I don't want to define generosity. I want to refine. You say refine? So we're going to refine it this morning. So a few, was it four weeks, five weeks ago? Yeah, about, four weeks. about four weeks ago. And so Keith calls me and uh, says, I want to come talk to you. As a preacher, you never know what that means. It could be good or it could be not so good, you know. And uh, so, so Keith comes by the office and, and he says, you know, I, like, like others do, he says, I like to, uh, when I'm out eating breakfast or lunch or something, I see someone who uh, needs or looks like they need lunch, or, you know, maybe could use a little hand. She says, I like to pay for their meal and then have the, the waitress uh, just tell them that, you know, just somebody just did this for you. And, and uh, so Keith came up with this idea that uh, we would print a, it's kind of a generosity card. It's a little business card, and it has, uh, I don't know exactly the wording, basically it says, uh, someone from Cedar Crest Baptist Church uh, has bought your meal today. And uh, he gives it to the waitress, and they give it to them. So it's a really neat thing. So I said, Keith, where are you going to eat breakfast and lunch? <laughs> That's what I wanted to know. <laughs> so he hasn't told me that yet, so I've not, I've not been able to find him. So we've been talking about generosity uh, all month long. And uh, because, of, because of what we're celebrating today, uh, we, 
we, we are a generous people like this offering. Uh, it amazes me every year just how you pour out your love through your offering for our missionaries. Uh, we, 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 uh, most of you know we used to set records. I mean, we used to set goals like New America goes. Then we said, here's our goal. Everybody give. Excuse me, everybody. Say everybody. So, so, so we just use the word plow where you pray about it, you listen, which is always good. No matter what you pray, listen, then you obey what he says and bring us back to worship. And so, so here we receive an offering. We don't take an offering. Did you know that? We receive an offering because God loves what kind of cheer, uh, give, giver? A cheerful giver. That's exactly right. So, so, uh, so generosity is a, is a trait for, for this group here. But, but I've been thinking about that, and I was thinking, in the midst of, who's got it better than us? Nobody. My goodness gracious. I mean, think about that. Nobody has it better than what we have it. We have a, a Savior who was, who was born sinless. He's the son of God, not son of Adam. See, we're all sons of Adam. So we're born with a sin nature. He was, he was born sinless. He lived a sinless life. He, he, lived, he lived all of his life without disobeying the Father. Then he died willingly a sacrificial death and he, and he died on that cross he died Can you say died? died and he was buried in a borrowed tomb and uh joseph knew it was only going to be for the weekend <laughs> right and on the third day he came out and and no one no other religious leader can say they're god because jesus told them what he was going to do he did it and then he's alive today. Amen? Amen? So I've never been to Israel, but if you go there, they can say, this is where we think he was. But we know where he is, don't we? Yeah. So because of his great generosity, we, we celebrate that today. So, so we want to we refine it just a little bit. And there are actually three types of generosity I want to talk about. The first one is I'm going to call this celebrity generosity. Can you say celebrity generosity? <laughs> so what do I mean by that? Well, you have... You have a lot of folks in our country who have lots of money. I'm talking about the Bill Gateses and the Warren Buffettses and the Mark Zuckerbergers and uh, is it Burger or just Berg? Whatever. Uh, the Oprah Winfrey's and I, I'm not opposed. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not dissing these folks. I'm not anyway. Um, but I'll just call this celebrity generosity. And so, um, recently I read of a college in Massachusetts, which is where my mom is from, Wenham, Massachusetts. It's an evangelical Christian, Gordon College. It's an evangelical school. And, and they received an anonymous gift of $75.5 million. I think I'd want my name on that, wouldn't you? No? And, uh, and then... You know, Bill Gates has this foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates. And uh, so far, Warren Buffett has, has contributed almost $51 billion. Can you say billion? billion? That's more zeros than I think I can count. I mean, that's a lot of money. Uh, Bill Gates himself is probably, to charitable causes, already donated over $50 billion. I mean, we're talking, we're talking a whole different league, aren't we? And, and I applaud those. I call those celebrity generosity because, because they, uh, I haven't seen where Elon Musk has given anything yet. He may have. He's probably the wealthiest man in the world at about $220 billion. Well, he's not going to get my money because I ain't buying an electric car. But anyway, that's a whole other subject. <laughs> but I... Uh, I think about that, and I call it celebrity generosity because they're not lacking anything. They haven't given out of their poverty in any form or fashion, you know. They still have billions of dollars. Now, they give this in stocks, which is okay, you know. If you have a few billion dollars in stock you want to donate today, we'll receive that in Jesus' name. Amen? <laughs> and, and I think, well, that's good. I, I'm grateful for that, you know. In fact, if you have their phone number, I'll call them. And tell them of another worthy cause that they can give to. But then I began thinking about the story in Matthew chapter 25. And it's the story of the talents. Do you remember that story? Yeah. So the, the owner leaves for a time. And he gives one. How many? Five. Gives the next one. I'm helping you here. 
He gives the last one. So the story goes, the guy who gave him five, he invested that, and, and he made five more. And the guy gave two, two, he invested his, and he got, so we now have ten for. And the guy who had one dug a hole and stuck it in the hole. So here's the kicker. The, the owner comes back, Right? Right? And so he says to the first one, uh, well, how'd you do? He said, well, I took your five and made five more. And then the, the, the owner said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So he goes to the next guy who had two and came back with four. And he said also to him, well, and then sheepishly the other guy comes up. And he says, I knew you were a hard man. So I just buried it so I could return the one. What did he call him? Wicked. <laughs> you know what struck me about this is, is that one day, one day all of us will stand before the creator of this world. The Mark Zuckerbergs, the Oprah Winfrey's, all those gazillionaires, all the, everyone will stand. And we will give an account. So I'm like, thank you, Jesus, for letting me be poor. Amen. <laughs> in comparison to so much. But it just reminded me that, that we, we have a responsibility to use that which God has given to us. A podcast only recently uh, talked about this. Uh, it was, uh, if I can remember exactly, uh, this, this idea, this consumerism idea that says that everything we get that we're to consume, and that's the American way, isn't it? Isn't that an American dream? Bigger and better, bigger and better. But, but the thing is, there's a responsibility. And so, though I celebrate what the celebrities have done, I, I still, I still kind of shake in my boots thinking about that responsibility. So there's celebrity generosity. Say celebrity generosity. Celebrity. Then there's a type of generosity that really caught Jesus' attention. We're going to call this unbridled generosity. You say unbridled? <laughs> now, if you're, from a, if you're from the farm, you know what I'm talking about. You put a bridle on a horse... And uh, you can guide that horse wherever you want it to go. But you take the bridle off, and what happens? Well, they just take off. They're romping and stomping, aren't they? So this is unbridled generosity. And, and the thing about this is, is that it, 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 really, it really caught Jesus' attention. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take you to, to three of these incidences here. Uh, the first one is found... In Mark chapter 12, if you have your Bible, uh, you can look it up. If not, it'll, it'll be up on the screen, hopefully. So in Mark chapter 12, uh, there's, this, there's this moment when, when Jesus is being questioned by, by the religious leaders. And then toward the end of chapter 12, uh, he, he says to them, be, beware of the scribes. Those are some of the religious elite. He says, they like to walk around in long robes and they like greetings. I'm in verse uh, 38. Greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues in the places of honor at feasts who devour widows' houses for a pretense, make long prayers. They will, they will receive the greater condemnation. And then, then verse 41 says, And Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and he watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich celebrity people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make about a penny. Catch the contrast? It makes about a penny. And he called his disciples and he said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had and all that she had to live on. I'm telling you, it caught Jesus' attention because we have a, a poor widow lady here who, who had no one to take care of her. And she decided in her heart, I'm just going to trust God with everything I have. And so she had this small little offering, and she brings this offering. She puts it in it. And when she put it in there, she was saying, God, I trust you completely. I trust you completely. And though, so that, that translates for us is that when, we, when we're generous, what we're saying is that we believe our God can replace and go beyond anything we could ever give. 
that we can't outgive God. And so this widow just brought that offering, and Jesus said, that was the best offering. Now, if you're in fundraising, you'd say, well, that was not a very good offering. But Jesus is not in the fundraising, is he? He doesn't need anything, does he? So we see this first incident here of this unbridled generosity. There's a, there's a second one I'll draw your attention to. It's in Luke chapter 10. And it's the story of the, the Good Samaritan. Now, don't, don't miss the importance here. This is Jesus talking to um, a bunch of Jewish religious leaders. There were others in the crowd. And he tells the story. This, this, uh, this one guy there, beginning verse 25, he was a lawyer. And uh, he said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, What's written? And he, he knew what was written because that was, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, very good. Then he said, he said, go, go and do this, not go and know it. See, a lot of people know it. Would you say that? A lot of people know it. There's a difference between knowing it and doing it, right? If you know it and do it, then you got it, right? If you know it and don't do it, you don't got it, do you? Pardon my English. So then, then, then Jesus, then he says to Jesus, wanting to justify himself, he said, who exactly is my neighbor? So he wanted, he wanted to know just, he, he's what I call a minimalist. You know what a minimalist is? They do just what minimally they have to do. That's what a minimalist is. So he says, let me clarify this. I, I'm going to work on loving God but I want to I draw a parameter around, around who my neighbor is because I don't want to get stretched too far. So he says, who's my neighbor? And Jesus tells him the story of, of a gentleman who's going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. If you pick back up there with me, uh, there is a, we're in verse, three, verse 30. Jesus says, man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead, which means he was half alive, Right? So then the story plays out, and a priest who, who, should, who should have run to him, it would be like the, the, uh, the bishops today. They, they should have run over there. So what did they do? They saw him, and what did they do? They went on the other side of the road. And I can only imagine probably one of this. So they couldn't see him, walked on by. And he's still there, and they're half dead. And then along comes the Levite. Here's your preacher. And the Levite, I don't know if he saw the preacher or not, but the Levite did the same thing. He crossed on the other side of the road, right? He stuck his nose up in the air because he didn't have time. And then, and then along comes the Samaritan. Now, you know this already, but the Jews and the Samaritans did not jihaw. That's an old country term for how you plow, Right? They did not get along. They were half-breeds. And so Jesus says, and along comes this Samaritan, and he, he goes over there, says in verse 33, but a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii, which is about two days' wage. They got paid about a denarii a day. So what we knew about the Samaritan is, is that he was not a wealthy person. He didn't have a whole lot. So he took, he took two days' wages, which was probably like, he says, he took two denarii and gave, him to the, gave them to the innkeeper saying, take care of him and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Then Jesus asked, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers. Can you picture the lawyer now? What could he say other than Samaritan? It caught Jesus' attention. He told the story because you wanted him to see that those, those who really have a generous spirit are those who give without any expectations, who give because they just see a need and they just reach out there. Even this Samaritan, this half-breed, could trust God enough to know that if I take care of him, that God's going to take care of me. And so, so the Good Samaritan story reminds us of this unbridled generosity. 
One more story. This one's found back in Mark's gospel, Luke chapter, Mark chapter 14. This is right before Jesus being arrested and being beaten and crucified. And he's at Bethany. Now, most would say this is at uh, Lazarus' house. We're not told that. And this is probably, could be Mary, Mary and Martha. Verse 3 says, And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining there, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly. And she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, this is the Baptist group. Why was this ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 nary and given to the poor, and they scolded her. <laughs> I have to laugh, I think. If they had that ointment, would they have sold it and given it to the poor? No. What would they have done? They would have sold it maybe and would have done with the money. Put it in their pocket. Because they're interested more in themselves than anybody else. So, so they, they scolded her. And then Jesus, it calls it, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you. And whenever you want, you can do good for them. And it's a good reminder to us that as a church, we must be sensitive to those who have needs. Right? Right? Now, I know that's a struggle for us because we see, we see people all the time out there. And I, I, think, I think we need to have more of a systematic approach to helping those who are genuinely poor. Because we're suspicious, aren't we? Those on the side of the road. You know, we don't want to make eye contact with them. We don't know what to do with them. And I understand that. It is a tension for us. But there are, there are genuinely poor people out there who, need, who have needs. And Jesus reminds us of that. He says, For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. These three little snapshots of generosity caught Jesus' attention. Because they were all stories about, about people who, who believed and trusted in God and was willing to give literally their self away, knowing that God would never leave them nor forsake them. Amen? So let's review. The first type of generosity was what? And we're not opposed to that, are we? We're in favor of that, aren't we? You know, people say, well, what if, what if somebody wins the lottery and wants to tie the church? I said, Amen. I would never encourage you to play the lottery, but, you know, Satan's had that money long enough. Amen? So tithe on that's about 30%, just so you know. <laughs> so the first was celebrity. Then the second part was what? Unbridled. And then, and then the last one this morning, as you know where we're headed, is Jesus' generosity. I, I love those... Uh, I love those stories. John chapter 3. We'll end there this morning. How could we not end except in John chapter 3? I love the, the kids' versions of stories. You know, James right down here, our preschool director. We have a great time at our chapel service. and You know, what you say is not always what they hear. So recently, uh, Austin was leading it, and he told the story of Zacchaeus. And so uh, Hollis picked up on it, and so she was singing that song, We Little Man Was He. He climbed up in the yeah, to a sycamore tree. I forgot the song. A little, yeah. So, and then, and then Hollis' version, he called him down, he said, and he huffed and he puffed, and he blew the house down. <laughs> that, was, that was, something happened. <laughs> it just happens like that. So, but she, she's still young enough to catch it. So, John 3, 16 is another one of those stories for, can we just say that together? For God so loved the world that he gave his only whosoever believes in him. Fair. Have everlasting life. Years ago, I heard of, this little kid was, re, was reciting it, and he said, for God so loved the world he gave his only forgotten son. And theologically, that's correct. Hmm? 
Because, because for God, so how do we know? Jesus' generosity gave everything. He came. He didn't have to come. He came. And, and, and we didn't even care if he came or not. He just came. For God saw the word that he gave. All the generosity that we do is because of the way he gave his only begotten son, his only forgotten son. And as I said, he lived, he lived for us. He came for us. Someone had to pay our debt, and only he could do it. So he came and he lived and he died for us. Substitutionally, sacrificially, he died for us. And he's hanging on that cross. And in that moment, he says, my God, my God, why have you? It was Martin Luther, the reformer, who said, God forsaking God. Who can imagine? And in that moment, he who knew no sin became sin. The holy and righteousness of God required payment. He couldn't just look the other way. He's too holy and too righteous. He required that blood be shed. And it was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he hung there for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him and I slow down here because we must make sure we understand this means not understands there's no one in this room that doesn't understand you wouldn't be here for an Easter service if you didn't understand there's a, there's a step from understanding to believing and trusting like the widow who fully entrusted her life like the, like the good Samaritan who fully entrusted his life into that robber and so he knew he was going to take care of him like like mary who just poured out everything she had you must entrust your life that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life verse 17 we got to go there don't we it says for god did not send his son to the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him verse 18 whoever believes in him is not condemned but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of this one and only Son. See, here's, here's the kicker for us. So here's the gospel in a nutshell. The kicker for us is, is that when we're born, from God's perspective, we are condemned already. And we have such a hard time grasping that. We think about that precious baby. I've told you, nothing more special to me than going to the hospital and praying for those precious babies the day they're born or the next day. Nothing better than that. But, but inherent in every human being that's born, male or female, which is only two sexes, by the way, male and female, there is a condemnation that, that nothing can take away but the blood of Jesus. And we grow up and not only do we have that nature, but we choose to sin. And in essence, that means we choose to live for ourselves. We have this God who's given us everything. He's extended his common grace to everybody. So we have a body and a mind. We can get up and we can move. We can, we can be creative. We can do all kinds. He extends his common grace to everybody. But common grace is not enough to save us. Being good is not enough to save us. If it were, it wouldn't be fair, would it? But at the cross, the, land, the ground is level. So at the cross, we realize that this, everything comes to that point at the cross. That's why, we, that's why there's a cross up there. Because of Jesus' generosity, we refine the idea of generosity is, is that he gave all. And when he comes to us, he requires all. He doesn't require some. He requires it all. And as we grow in him... We give him more, right? But you must give him all. So, so today as we celebrate Easter, some of you here are like, well, that sounds interesting, but I'm, I'm not quite ready for that. Here, can I tell you it's okay not to be ready? It's okay. You say, well, I still have some questions. Can I tell you it's okay to have questions? It's okay. Questions are good. If they lead you to investigate. So, so if you're just still unsure, I would say, hey, here's a word for you. Investigate. Say investigate. investigate. Check it out for yourself. 
you know. There's some great books out there. You know, Lee Strobel has some amazing books out there. He was, he, he was as hardcore atheist as you could be. And then, amazingly, his wife gets saved. Boy, he said, I'll prove this is wrong. He ended up proving it was right. So don't take my word for it. Investigate for yourself. Ask questions. Ask me questions. Ask your Christian friends questions. There's nothing that sharpens a Christian than somebody questioning their faith. Why do you believe that? Why? Yeah. So if you're here and you've not made that step, I would say just keep investigating. We have the, the Bible. The Bible has nothing to hide, you know. Now, do I understand every nuance of it? No. Because I'm not God. And, and there's a divine mystery in here of some things that we'll never fully understand. But we understand that God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. That if you'll entrust your life to him today, you will not perish. Because that's what you're programmed for. But you'll have everlasting life. So if you're in that category, can I encourage you to investigate? Say investigate. investigate. So maybe you're here and you're not attached to a church. You know. You say, well, I don't, I don't need a church. Well, not according to Scripture. <laughs> according to Scripture, you do need a church. You know, this is the body of Christ. There are a lot of things that happen in a church. Not just this church. There's a lot of great churches around here. The only thing is, we know how we're going to treat you if you come here. You with me? We don't know how we're going to treat you. We know how we're going to treat you. We're going to love you and care for you. So, so if, you're, if, you're, if you're unaffiliated with the church, here's your word. Integrate. Get involved. Pour your life out. Jesus died for his church. And scripture is very clear. Do not forsake the assembling together. So this could be, this could be a great moment for you. Say, you know what? I'm still, I'm still the Lone Ranger. And you may even have a Tonto. But that's not the way it was intended to be. So for you, it's just to say, you know what? This Easter Sunday, I'm going to mark this down. I'm getting involved somewhere, and you're welcome here, but somewhere. And then if neither one of those categories fits you, then if you, somebody loves Jesus, I would say you need to become a lot more invitational. Hmm? You, you, we're not out there looking for spiritual projects. We just believe that Jesus is the only way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And if you're a follower of Jesus, and you know anybody, family or friend, that doesn't know him, you and I are obligated out of the generosity of Jesus to say, hey, hey, I love you enough to tell you the truth, but you got to live it first, and then you can share it. If you're not living it, please don't share it, right? If you're living like the world, don't tell them you're a Christian. You need to repent today and say, Jesus, I'm not living for you. Then you can tell them, say, you know what? I wasn't living. I was living like everybody else, but not anymore. Easter Sunday, I said, I'm going to live for Jesus, and I want to tell you that my whole life has changed, and I want to invite you to know Jesus. So everybody here has an assignment. If you're not sure, investigate. If you're not connected, integrate. If you've done those first two, you need to be inviting people to Jesus. Amen? We pray with you for just a moment? Father, we are thankful to you. There's, there's nothing like Easter Sunday morning. Nothing like it. We, we celebrate Christmas in the idea and understanding that we're headed to here. Christmas as it stands alone is not enough. It was not enough that you gave your son, but your son had to die for us. So we celebrate the second part. He did, and he's coming back. So what's your response? So if you're in the first group, don't stop short. If you're in the second group, find a place. If you're in the third group, get busy. 
We don't know when Jesus is coming back, but what do we know? What do we know? One day closer. So, Father, thank you. Thank you just to, for a chance to see everybody and greet everybody and hug everybody. And, Lord, just to remind ourselves of your, your generosity. Help us to generously give ourselves away. Because as we do that, you flow through us. So in just a moment, Lord, we're going to stand and we're going to sing. The altar will be open. And we want to celebrate one more time in song this morning. So stand with me if you would. Let's sing like you mean it. Huh? Can you sing like you mean it? I'm going to be listening. Creation. Mm-hmm. 
Thank you so much for joining us in our online service here at Cedarcrest. Hope it was a meaningful experience for you, and we look forward to you joining us again real soon. Don't forget about the Connect card. Uh, you can go to ccbchurch.org. That's our website, and you'll find all the information that you'd want about our church. You can connect there. You can also invest in the ministry here. There's a give uh, place there on the website. You can do that. We'd love for you to be a part of what we're going on here, what's going on here at Cedarcrest. Our services on Easter Sunday will be 8.30 and 10.15 a.m. And we'd love for you to join us in person, but if you can't, we hope you can join us online. So it's going to be a great time of celebrating our risen Lord. Uh, thank you for being with us again. Uh, you can join us not only on Sundays, but also on Wednesdays. Uh, we have our Wednesday services online, and we'd love for you to join us with there, there as well. So God bless you.